Hello, my name is Bob Ungs, and it's a pleasure to be here today with everybody. I am a native of Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania, where I reside with my wife, Stephanie, our daughter, Bobby, and my two sons, Luke and Abraham. For as long as I can remember, I have always loved both art and music, and I will discuss my relationship with both of these art forms as we proceed. But first, I'd like to start by giving you some background on my education and work experience. This will help you understand what led me to where I am today, both professionally and artistically. I'm going to try to condense 35 years of my life into a 30 or 40 minute presentation. So needless to say, I can't include all the shenanigans in this time frame. After graduating, from Hollidaysburg Area School District in 1984. I worked for my father's landscaping business for about a year and a half before deciding to go to college, where I went on to earn a Bachelor of Science degree in art education from Penn State University. I completed my BS in art education in 1991. After completing my BS degree in art education, I did some substitute teaching for about a year and a half before returning to college and completing a second degree in special education at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, AKA IUP, finishing that degree in 1996. Upon completion of my special education degree, I was offered a job in York, Pennsylvania as a traveling art teacher, teaching art at five different schools exclusively to special needs students with ages ranging from nine to 21 years old. After one year as a traveling art teacher in New York, PA, I was offered a job teaching multiple disabilities special education for the same school district. I thought it over and decided to accept the multiple disabilities position because I believe that I could use my art and music talents in the special needs class. After a total of three years teaching, in the York School District, I was offered a job as a special education learning support teacher at Keith Junior High in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Although I love my job in York, I decided to take the job at Keith Junior High so I could move back home where I could be closer to my family. So I worked as a learning support teacher at Keith Junior High for one year. During that time, I was responsible for teaching all core subjects to 7th, 8th, and ninth grade students. In 1999, after one year of working at Keith Junior High, I was offered a position at Hollidaysburg Area Senior High School, also teaching learning support students. I also taught all the core subjects at Hollidaysburg to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade learning support students. I worked as a learning support teacher at Hollidaysburg Senior High School for five years at which time the art teacher retired and I applied for his job and was chosen for the art teacher position at Hollidaysburg Area Senior High School. So feeling that, like I had come full circle back to my art education degree, I accepted the art teaching position at Hollidaysburg where I taught 10th, 11th, and 12th grade art for five years. Um, during that time, as an art teacher at Hollidaysburg, I was responsible for designing and instructing all levels of art classes, ranging from total beginner arts and crafts to highly advanced levels uh, of arts and crafts and everything in between. Um, after five years of teaching at Hollidaysburg um, as an art teacher, I decided to change my uh, careers and I was hired as an activities specialist at the uh, Hollidaysburg Veterans Home where I have worked for the past 11 years. This position gives me the opportunity to utilize both my art and music skills with the goal of having a positive impact and enriching the lives of America's most deserving veterans. So I've given you a background on my education and a cliff note version of my work experience. At this point, I would like to transition into talking a little bit about my personal journey with regards uh, to my love of art. Um, I would be amiss if I didn't also include music in this discussion because for me, the two are closely intertwined. From the time I was a young boy, I have always loved both art and music. 
I actually started singing and writing songs long before I ever made a painting. My music appreciation, especially the music uh, from the 40s through, say, maybe the 70s, is mostly due to my father's influence. From the time I was a very young boy, I grew up working for my father and helping him run his landscaping and excavating business. Working outside daily, I developed an appreciation for the outdoors, which would later translate into a love of landscape painting. While working outdoors, my dad often listened to music that he liked. He gave me an appreciation for the music of his generation. In fact, I know how to play so much music from his era that my wife and I take those songs and perform them at senior centers all over the state of Pennsylvania and all the way down into West Virginia. As it turns out, the songs that my dad loved are very popular among people his age. Folks from my dad's uh, generation will be quick to tell you that's when music was music, and I have to agree. As I mentioned earlier, my dad has had a landscaping business growing up. He started taking me to work with him when I was about five years old. And occasionally, my dad would take a break from working and we would stop by the American Legion in Holidaysburg to sign in. My dad was a veteran. He would stop in to talk to some of his buddies. He wasn't a big drinker, so this only happened every now and then. I remember asking one of the men at the bar. To my recollection, his name was Bones. At least that's how they referred to this fellow. I asked Bones what was in his glass. and. Uh, he told me it was whiskey. So I asked Old Bones if I could have a sip of that. Well, I remember, you know, him asking my dad if it was okay. So I mean, remember folks, this was 50 years ago. So Bones asked my dad, and he was sitting right beside me, if it would be okay if I had a sip. And my dad said, well, I guess go ahead and let him have a sip that way once he tries that stuff, he's never gonna ask for another one again. Well, that plan sort of backfired on my dad. So after my dad said, sure, go ahead, I tried a little sip of Bones' whiskey, and I didn't really mind it. Um, I didn't make a face or anything, which sort of impressed my dad's buddy, and he started bragging me up, and some of the other fellows at the bar heard Bones talking about this this boy over here that could drink a little bit of whiskey and not even flinch and, or make a face. So of course I had to, you know, I had to do it again to prove that I actually could uh, could drink a little sip of this stuff and not make a face. And so um, what happened is I guess uh, my dad felt like he had to go along with it by this point because he was sort of committed. So he let me do another one and. Uh, he was already invested in the situation and uh, he wanted to show off his son being tough. So uh, there was no really turning back at this point. So I, I, I did another one and, and uh, didn't flinch and the guys at the bar just thought it was great. Well, meanwhile, my dad and I had been practicing songs and he always wanted me to sing for people. And I had about three songs in my uh, repertoire at that point. So my dad asked me if I would get up and sing at the bar. Um, so I, I got up and I remember singing a little bit of a Rob, 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 uh, Marty Robbins, Marty Robbins song. And uh, then I sang uh, uh, The Yellow Rose of Texas for the fellas. And then I think I ended up with uh, Jesus Loves Me. And by that time, I really had won these guys over and to the point where the bartender who they called Toad, uh, he had this rubber toad behind the bar, and uh, I knew that they liked me so much after I sang these songs, and after taking a couple of <laughs> sips of whiskey, I asked Toad if I could have his, his, his toad. It was like a little rubber toy, and he, sure enough, he gave it to me. And the guys at the bar gave me a bunch of money and coins and uh, $1 bills and candy, so I learned at a very early age that uh, if I performed like that, I'd probably get rewarded real well and everybody would like it. So that's, um, Part of this, how it intertwines with art and music. I got into the, the music scene um, at a very early age, um, even before art. I look back on those days with fond memories, and I continue to play music to this day, acoustically with my wife at senior centers, 
We also have a band stepping into Wild Hearts where we play modern country, classic rock. We play in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and West Virginia. We even played uh, last year here at the Community Arts Center in Johnstown for um, their, uh, um, what was it called, the Arts-toberfest. So music and art for me have always been intertwined. At this point, I'd like to give you a little bit more background and the in-depth background as to how I actually got into art and my art experiences. I'll start by saying that in public school setting, I enjoyed art from kindergarten until 10th grade. 10th grade uh, was my last year that I took art in public school setting, mostly because I couldn't really relate to the art teacher at that time, and I was stubborn. So I decided to do art on my own time and not at school. In my high school years, I did a lot of pencil drawings and I didn't paint pictures at that point. That didn't happen until college. In high school, I focused more on singing, drawing, and writing songs and poetry. Because after all, in those days, I wanted to become a rock star. And uh, who am I kidding? I still do want to become a rock star. So continuing on with my story um, and journey of how I actually became an art teacher and an artist. As I mentioned earlier, from the time I was a young boy, I grew up working with my dad and helping him run his business. When my dad wasn't busy with his work, I would help his friend who was a house builder and a general contractor. I remember the day that I decided to go to college. I was working on a steep roof, tearing off shingles in order to put new shingles on the roof. One afternoon, I had an epiphany as I looked over the rooftops of the surrounding houses. I realized that I just wouldn't be fulfilled doing work like that or the work my dad did for the rest of my life. Not that there was or is anything wrong or bad about doing honest work like that. I just knew that I wanted to do something different for myself. I just wasn't sure about how to go about achieving my goals at that point, or even what my goals were at that point. I thought that maybe I would go to college and get a degree of some sort and make my dad proud. Maybe I could even choose a degree that I could use to help further his business. So I applied and I was accepted at the Penn State Altoona campus as a DUS student. Um, I can't remember anymore what exactly that acronym stood for, but basically it meant enrolled, but undecided. But us college kids back then gave it uh, another name, but I can't uh, talk about that here. After a year and a half at the Altoona campus and two years at the main campus, I had taken plenty of elective courses and core classes, but had not yet declared a major. I had an interest in landscape architecture, but was saddened and stressed over the amount of math that was involved. I was never a big fan of geometry and trigonometry. I took turf grass management classes and found those to be especially boring. Uh, I just couldn't get excited about calibrating a sprayer. I loved entomology, but actually enjoyed drawing insects much more than studying them for the scientific perspective. Horticulture classes were also very interesting and I especially liked drawing the various plants and flowers that we studied. I did not like, however, learning the Latin names for hundreds of plant species. So I, I came to the conclusion that I was working against myself as far as what I like to do and what I'm naturally good at in comparison to the courses I was taking and the misery I was feeling at that point. I knew that I wasn't yet in my element with regards to my interests matching up with my college curriculum. I was spinning my wheels as far as finding a suitable career, and it was getting to the point where I definitely needed to declare a major. By that time, I had visited some of the art rooms on campus, and I had seen students drawing outside in the gardens. I remember thinking that I wanted to have a class where I could go outside and draw. I took a stroll where an art class was drawing in a flower garden, and I asked the instructor about the class. She told me the class was beginner drawing. I remember looking at some of the students' work and thinking to myself, I could do this, and I would really like to do this as well. 
So I decided to take a walk around some of the art buildings inside the campus. I remember immediately feeling intrigued and somewhat at home as I walked through the art buildings and watched students as they painted in their studios. I thought to myself, hmm, this could be the right path for me. It was then that I decided to make an appointment with my Penn State academic advisor. I had enough of banging my head against the wall and swimming upstream. I sat down with my advisor and she asked me what I would like to do if I could do anything for a career. It turned out to be a life-changing meeting in a very positive way. Like I said, by this time I had already taken all of my electives and all I really needed to do was declare a major. This pivotal meeting helped guide me into what I should have been doing the entire time. Looking back now, I think deep down that I knew art was the right major for me, but I was afraid to just go for it. My advisor blocked several hours out of her schedule just for me. She proceeded to ask me questions that made me take a hard look at myself. Questions with the exception of a high school interest survey no one had ever asked me before, and I suppose I really never asked myself. Perhaps I always assumed that I would take over my dad's business and that I didn't need to think about other options. Whatever the case, my advisor asked me about my interests as well as what motivated me and what I was passionate about. At that point, I didn't know what I was passionate about, but I did know that I really enjoyed both music and art. Looking back on this experience, she definitely helped me acquire some self-awareness as far as my interest and the importance of my interest matching up with the right career path. She asked me why I was trying to get into landscape architecture when I hated math so bad and my interests were clearly more in the arts. I told her that I was trying to please my dad by doing something I knew he would like and that I could possibly use to help him with his business. She helped me realize that I wasn't going to be happy or successful until I found something that I was passionate about. Now it was time to match my interests and skill level with my career. These choices and decisions were challenging for me when I was younger. These days, I seem to pretty much know what I want almost all the time in every aspect of my life. But back then I didn't. I guess that's one of the benefits of getting older, at least in my case. She then asked me a question that I don't think anyone has ever asked me, and I never seriously asked myself, which was, have you ever considered a career in art? I remember saying, what would I do? She then proceeded to list numerous jobs in the art field, jobs that I didn't even think of. When she got to art teacher, my mind immediately felt a connection and I stopped her and I said, I could see myself doing that and being an art teacher, but I don't know if I would ever get a job. She said, yes, you will. It may take a little while and you may have to substitute teach, but you will definitely find a job teaching art. I knew I had to make a decision and the thought of becoming an art teacher made me feel excited and happy. Art education felt right. I've always been a very social person and teaching just seemed like a great choice for a career. So I decided right then and there to go for it. Having all of my electives and general education courses out of the way, all I needed to do was declare a major. I decided on the spot right then and there to become an art teacher. My advisor then planned out all of the classes that I would need for the following year and a half in order for me to earn a Bachelor of Science in Art Education. The next semester, I began taking all types of art classes to fulfill the requirements of the major. I was so happy to finally be in a legit major, and it was great. I remember quickly meeting students like myself and feeling very comfortable and eager to learn. It was like a heavy weight was lifted off my shoulders and my grades went up because I was finally in my element. It was exciting meeting new people who were artistic like me. I was making new friends while learning from professors. Uh, the projects in each class were challenging 
and they were fun for me. I was making new connections and learning how to network, and it was hard work, but I enjoyed it all. So, to um, make a long story a little longer, in the end, I did find my niche, and it took me a little longer than some to find my way, but that's okay. I look back on the journey with um, the understanding that I am very fortunate and blessed to have found my place in the world. It is a true blessing to be able to make a living doing the things that bring you happiness, which for me are art and music. At best, I can uh, save someone else time or inspire another person not to give up, but rather to go after the things that they want, especially regarding career and life goals. All right, whenever you're ready. My motto for quite some time has been it's better to try at something that you really want to do and fail than it is not to try at all. Because in my opinion, not trying at all is a greater failure. For me, art and music, along with other very important things like my faith, being a good husband, dad, and good person in general, are all high on my value list. These are all things that I continually work on, constantly striving to do better, which includes both succeeding and failing at times. I try not to get overly confident when I experience success or overly discouraged at failures. The best we can do when we fail at something is to learn from it and hopefully not repeat it. I believe that it is also very good to be humble about successes as humility looks good on all of us. So there you have it, a cliff note version of my life and the events which all lined up in order for me to be here with you today. I will be teaching painting classes here at the Arts Center, one on September 12th and the other on September 19th. Please feel free to join me if that is something that you would be interested in doing. We can have some fun painting and talking about art. Thank you very much. So I would like to thank the um, Community Arts Center of Cambria County for having me here today um, at the Narrow Path exhibit. Um, my exhibit will be up during the entire month of September until the 30th. It can also be viewed online at caccc.org. And my artwork also can be purchased online at bobangst.com. So my wife Stephanie and I will be playing acoustically in Wheeling, West Virginia on September 15th. And more locally, we will be playing at the Old Canal Inn in Hollidaysburg with the Five Piece Band, Stephanie and the Wild Hearts, on September 24th behind the restaurant near the railroad tracks. So it should be a very nice outdoor show if the weather's nice. So again, I would like to thank the Arts Center and everyone involved for this event. I appreciate it and it has meant so much to me to be here and I'm very grateful and humbled by this experience. Thank you very much.